All right, so we've got 10 things that you need to know when you're cruising from Port Canaveral. Number one thing to know about cruising from Port Canaveral is there are multiple locations to cruise from. There is actually an A side to the port and a B side to the port. The A side is on the north side of the port and the B side is on the south side of the port. And when driving into Port Canaveral, you actually have to choose which side to go to. Now cruise terminals 5 through 10 are on the north side and that is primarily um, Disney. Uh, also, Royal Caribbean and Carnival do cruise from there. Uh, so really, when you drive in to the port area, they have signs that tell you which side your ship is actually on. So it's really important that you pay attention to those signs. You can prepare a little bit ahead of time if you know what cruise terminal you're sailing from. Like I said, one through four, even some of those uh, number terminals aren't actually built out yet, but one through four are on the south side, five through ten are on the north side. So you'll see that when you're coming in and they'll actually, they have signs and they put your ship name on it and tell you which terminal to go to. Second thing to know about cruising from Port Canaveral is you have several parking options. There are, are the typical parking options of when you want to park at the port. It's primarily the more expensive option but a little bit more convenient. Just like tip number one that we said, where you have two sides to the port, each one of those sides actually has its own parking structures. So you get to park right at your terminal based on which terminal you're cruising from. So there are also several off-site parking options. And those are most likely more affordable. So where the on-site Parking at the port is around $20 a day, which gets pretty steep, especially on like a seven or eight day cruise. The offsite ones are more towards the seven or eight dollar a day uh, fees. But one thing that you have to do is you, you either have to go there first and then they will actually uh, shuttle you and all of your luggage with you to the port after you park and then drop you off right in front of the cruise terminal or what you you know what some other people do is they'll actually drive in do the drive around the port drop their luggage off with the porters and then actually uh, then one person will drive the car to the parking area or the parking structure off-site and then they will just ride the shuttle back by themselves so it's a little bit easier that way because um, because you don't have to you know shuffle your luggage onto the shuttle and whatnot you can just you drop them off with the porters uh, you know hand them off just bring your carry-ons with you um, one thing tip your porters so typical tips for your porters are about a dollar a bag at least that's what um, We've always heard is the typical, that's what we tip our porters. So usually it's, it ends up being, I mean, we, we don't travel like that, I guess. And typically when we, when, you know, we, we cruise, we go with our kids. So you, you usually have about three or four bags, um, especially with girls and old shoes that, that they want to bring for formal nights and you know, sandals and everything. So we usually have a lot of bags and we usually end up tipping the porters 15 to $20. Um, when we drop off our bags. They will take good care of you. Uh, and they also will do the same thing when you get off the ship. Uh, so that's, a, that's an important thing to do to take care of them. That's their, their livelihood. And, and it is expected to tip your porters um, and be prepared with, with cash. So typically they'll take good care of you and your bags if you take care of them. So number three thing to know. 
about cruising from Port Canaveral is there are actually a lot of local restaurants that are kind of gathered into uh, an area on the south side, which is the B terminal side of the port into an area called the Cove. So in that area, there are several restaurants. Um, there's Grills, there is Seafood Atlantic, there's Rusty Seafood, there's Fish Lips, and there's Gator Stockside, um, as well as uh, a, a few other smaller ones and uh, some, some newer tap room. And so I am going to be doing a separate video on all of the restaurants that are in the Cove area. And it has uh, more than just restaurants. They also have some excursions if you want to go deep sea fishing. Uh, you can also, another neat thing is uh, towards the evening. So uh, if you come in to port and you're planning on staying in, in the Canaveral area um, the night before and then getting up early and, and being on your cruise uh, first thing. So the night before you can go and towards the evening typically uh, all the fishing boats come in and what they'll do is they'll actually bring in the fish and and they have the the, the fish hangers where you know people that that went on the on the, the charter fishing excursion they actually put the fish up there and they'll take your picture and there's like a webcam for people that that, that watch that and, and see you come in with your catch and then they'll actually um, clean the fish right there for you the you know the the people that run the charter fishing fishing boat will, will clean your fish and package it up. Granted, if you're going on a cruise, you're not going to be able to bring your fish with you. But if uh, if you're here for a couple days, or or if you're local, or, or whatnot, or even if you want, you know, if you're coming off your cruise and and you want to pack that fish and, and bring it home with you as as fresh fish, like if you you stay after a day or two and do some Port Canaveral excursions after your cruise. It's something where, uh, where you can pack fish and bring it home and have you know fresh seafood from Florida. So it's a, it's a good option, especially in that area. So there are actually some other restaurants in the area uh, that aren't in that cove, and and some of them are more local restaurants, uh, you know, some sushi places and whatnot um, that are really high quality, and we highlight those actually on our website. Uh, you can go to Port Canaveral and then look up uh, local food and drink and you can see that. But another good option, especially if you come in the night before and you want to uh, see some, you know, go to a local place, they don't offer food, but what they do offer is uh, locally, you know, craft brewed beers and it's the Florida Beer Company. It is very close to Port and they offer many beers on tap, and their facility is actually the place where they both brew the beer and bottle it for production. So it's their production facility, and they have a small tap room that has all glass windows, and you can look out into their production facility where they're actually making all of their beers that they're shipping out all over the country, and that's the Florida Beer Company. It's about a half of a mile uh, away from the B side of the port. Um, and we'll also highlight that in our uh, food and drink video that we're gonna do for Port Canaveral. So number four, there's actually a county park that is on the B side of the port, um, so the south side, and it's called Jetty Park. And why it's called that is there's a long jetty that goes out from the port and uh, has like a fishing pier and whatnot, but they also have uh, camping there. You know, if people, um, people bring their RVs and they'll camp there for a period of time. And they have uh, nature trails and, and various things like that where, where you can go and just enjoy some of the Florida uh, nature environment. They also have a, a beach area that you can go to. So if you just wanted to go there for the day, it's, I don't know, four or five dollars like per carload of people. 
and you can go and enjoy the beach, enjoy some nature trails, uh, walk the pier. A lot of people will go both to the Jetty Park area and to the Cove area for uh, watching the cruise ships leave in the evening. So it's kind of a big event. Everybody waves to you as they're going off on their cruise and, uh, and you're just sitting there, you know, watching in envy as they, they sail away and party. So it's a, it's a really neat place to go. Uh, County Park, like I said, a couple dollars, uh, nothing big, but it's, it's definitely a nice place to kind of kick back and see some of the real Florida and uh, in, enjoy the beach and, and watch the people fish or watch the birds and, and whatnot. Number five. So many people don't know this, but as you're cruising out, there is actually just on the north side of the port, when you get past where the cruise ships dock, is Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. And part of that, you'll sail by it right when you're exiting the port, is a submarine base, which is kind of cool. So you can look over there. Um, there's not always a submarine in port, but uh, it's a neat thing to see if there is. And it's a, it's a Trident uh, uh, submarine base. Uh, so if you, when you're cruising out, um, don't always just look down to the south side on the Jetty Park side, but look on the north side, uh, right as you're kind of coming out to the exit of the port and you may get to see a submarine. So that's kind of cool. So number six, rocket launches. So also where there's a submarine base, just past that, just north of that is Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, which has rocket launches and the Kennedy Space Center. So uh, the shuttle's no longer launched from there. So what does launch from there is SpaceX, including the Falcon 9, soon to be the Falcon 9 Heavy, as well as many other rockets uh, launched from there. So one thing you may want to do is if you do come in early or can come in early before your cruise, check the launch schedule and I'll leave a link down in the description below to uh, the, the launch schedules so you can check to see if you could possibly come in and see a launch, which is, is one thing that's it's not completely unique to the Cape Canaveral area. There are some launches that happen out in California, but it's a, it's a pretty cool thing to see, especially the night launches if you get a chance to see those. Just a note though, uh, launches do get scrubbed and they do push out depending on weather uh, and many other factors. So if you come in for a launch, just letting you know, fair warning, you may actually miss it. Um, or another thing is if you, if you come in and you think you might have missed a launch, they might push it back into when you are here. Um, coolest thing to see would be if literally you were, you were cruising out into the evening and then you were able to see a night launch going up. So that would be a great sail away present for you. So number seven, a great way to both see the area of Port Canaveral um, and also get a good background on the history of the area here on the Space Coast is to go and visit the Exploration Tower. It is right by the cove uh, on the B side of the port. You can see it, you know, it's the, the large kind of uh, spinnaker sail shaped uh, building. Very cool. And uh, we do highlight some of the options uh, for it on our website. It's a, a few dollars to, per person to go into. And they do have an observation deck uh, that's pretty high that you can go and look out over the whole port area as well as some of the um, Air Force and uh, Kennedy Space Center areas. They do sell launch tickets separately. So if you are going to go there, and I, I, I believe they sell out very quickly. So you really have to be on top of it um, when they do come available. All right, so number eight thing to know. They say that Port Canaveral is actually in Orlando. Uh, it's actually not. They're trying to highlight the proximity to Orlando and especially to the attractions that are in Orlando. So Port Canaveral is about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on what part of Orlando you're talking about. 
and especially Disney, which is actually on the far side of Orlando, kind of on the, the southwest side. It's about an hour and a half. And, but it is, it is an easy drive. There are toll roads that go back and forth from Canaveral to Orlando, primarily what they call the Beach Line, which is 528. It is a toll road. Um, so if you are planning on taking that drive, definitely uh, you know, bring some, some dollar bills and quarters. That is the simplest and easiest way to drive from Port Canaveral to Orlando or go back and forth. The Orlando Airport is actually right on the beach line on 528. So it's a, it's a direct ride from uh, the Orlando Airport directly east to Port Canaveral. It's a, it's, a, it's a straight shot. But it is a toll road, so keep that in mind. And if you do come into the area a couple days early, then you can actually take advantage of that proximity and go to you know, Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, and just see some of those Orlando attractions and really kind of round out your cruise vacation. Uh, Disney does offer some uh, kind of cruise packages that allow you to take advantage of uh, Walt Disney World and then also go on a Disney cruise. And they do actually provide bus transportation from Orlando to the uh, to Port Canaveral for your cruise. So that makes it a little bit easier. Number nine thing to know when cruising from Port Canaveral, if you come in a day or so early uh, and get a hotel, there are several hotels in the area, they can actually offer you uh, parking at the hotel that will allow you to save some money above and beyond the uh, $20 a day at the port or $9, or $9 or $10 a day at any of the offsite. Uh, cruise parkings and then also offer you shuttle service back and forth to the port so that's a good thing to take advantage of if you are able to and save you some money and also experience some of the area before or after your cruise so the 10th thing to know about cruising from Port Canaveral is that we have some fantastic beaches in the area so Cape Canaveral, uh, primarily, uh, the main beach right by the port is Jetty Park. Uh, Cape Canaveral is not a very large uh, town. Cocoa Beach is just south of Cape Canaveral and they have many awesome beaches and very family-friendly environments. Also, uh, they have Ron John Surf Shop, Cocoa Beach Surf Company, and really it's known as one of the premier beaches in the area. It can get packed, especially when uh, people from Orlando come over to go to the beach. But there are uh, a lot of options when you want to go and uh, enjoy the beach when you're in port, maybe a day or two before your cruise leaves or after your cruise leaves. There are a lot of rentals, especially from Cocoa Beach Surf Company and Ron John's, where if you want to rent a surfboard and um, and go out and enjoy some of the waves, or if you don't know how to surf and want to learn how to surf, or anything like that, they do offer classes through both Cocoa Beach Surf Company and Ron John's where you can go and learn how to surf uh, and take that as a day. And those are very reasonable and, and a lot of fun. So that's it. Uh, that's our 10 things that you should know when you're cruising from Port Canaveral. So like we always say, uh, subscribe to our channel if you want to be able to enjoy this content. Uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified when we upload a new video. And uh, both, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, and if you have any comments on things that you think everybody should know when cruising from Port Canaveral, or things that you've experienced when cruising from Port Canaveral, leave a comment down below so that you can share it with everyone else. Thanks and we'll see you soon.